The most effective hacks, the ones that do the most damage, are done on people. This guy did something amazing when it comes to hacking. Be a Heza, by a Heza, but by this YouTuber who talks finance and how to become a millionaire, giving not financial advice, lol, he created a short. In this short, he tells us the story of how he set up a fake millionaire NFT guru. He makes an Instagram account, he takes photos of his friend, pays a famous person to endorse this guru pushes this whole nft lie onto the masses he gains followers he gains likes and great engagement on his posts he starts reaching out to people and he's surprised by the response people believe him and he's surprised by the success of this account now his message is don't trust everything you see on the internet I think that's a fair message. But for me, this highlights something very important in hacking, something that can be just as effective as a known exploit. We can learn all the technical stuff. We can learn how to hack any system, but sometimes the most effective hacks, the ones that do the most damage, are done on people. My name is Jeremiah, and I've been studying how to hack using the EJBT course material from INE. This week, I learned about social engineering. So what is social engineering? It's understanding and manipulating people for your benefit. Now I want to tell another story about someone that I know. So a few months ago, I was working at an IT store and one day this guy comes in all freaking out and he said that he was sent to us because his bank account had been hacked. He had been drained of money and so the bank had sent him to us to have a look at his laptop and to determine what we needed to do uh, to be able to make sure that the system wasn't compromised any further. So we start asking questions about antivirus and a whole bunch of things. And then eventually we get to the actual story of how this hack had happened. He said that he was having problems with his cable. So he called his cable company. They were on the phone for a long time trying to sort this issue out. And eventually the cable company said, look, give us a few, um, a few minutes to sort this out. We just have to do a few things on our end. There's no need for you to be sitting on the phone while we do this stuff. We'll give you a call when we are ready. He hangs up the phone and roughly 30 minutes later, they call back. This time they have an unusual request. So can you please install TeamViewer as we believe there may be an issue with your internet connection and that's why you have cable issues. Sure, I can do that. Thank you. He downloads TeamViewer and opens it up. All right, so now could you please read to me your ID and password? Yeah, I can read the ID and password. So it's and the password is great thank you now we just need to take over for a little while wait what do you mean you need to take over a little bit this is just a way that we work it's okay you are safe ah oh, okay that's fine the screen goes completely black on him well that's odd you are safe it's at this point that he feels that something odd is going on something suspicious is happening you are safe a few minutes go by and his computer is restored everything is all sorted thank you very much for calling oh, okay but open before him is a web browser and in that web browser is a bank account the bank account now reads zero where's all my money it had been completely drained i've been robbed this is social engineering at its finest. It's understanding and manipulating people for your benefit. Some of you do it all the time. And it's what some people call human hacking. And I think that's an accurate way to describe social engineering. It's a fancy term, but human hacking is probably more accurate to what it actually is doing, what we are actually trying to achieve. We're trying to hack people, getting people to do things that they wouldn't normally do. It's understanding the psychology of people, how they think and maneuvering them until they are in the place where we want them doing the things that we want. When we think of hacking, we often think of more hands on keyboard stuff, not just chatting to people. And that begs the question for us, why are we talking about social engineering? Why is human hacking part of the EJPT course? And it's actually pretty simple. A large majority of the hacks actually happen on the human level. A lot of them start 
with social engineering. Malware doesn't just appear on systems. Ransomware doesn't just insert itself on a system by itself. Bank accounts don't just get drained on their own. Also, the like and subscribe buttons don't just click themselves. Humans are still the weakest link in all of security. So making social engineering part of a assessment, part of a pen test is actually an important part of testing a company's security. It's making sure that the people that work there are actually aware of the risks involved. Doing a social engineering engagement within a pen test also gives our clients a good idea of the kind of culture that they are wanting to build security wise within their company. They want to know, are people actually security conscious? Do they actually care about these things? Are they on the lookout for things that are suspicious so that they can report them and let other people know? Social engineering engagements also give our clients perspective that we need that humans are still the acceptable risk within any system. We can have the most secure system in the world. We can be air gap completely and yet one misplaced USB plugged into the wrong port can bring a whole system down. I'm looking at you Stuxnet. Now in terms of the EJPT course, it was only about an hour long and I really enjoyed it. It was pretty cool. We did a bit of fishing. Uh, there was a couple of case studies that Josh Mason went through and explained, but the main thing that it focused on was phishing attempts. That's, a, that's mainly the kind of attack that a lot of um, people, organizations will actually face on a day-to-day -day basis. You and I have gotten those emails or those text messages saying, you know, your parcel is at the post office or there's a ton of inappropriate ones that I get on my old email, which is really annoying. I think what may have lacked in the course was probably a little bit more OSINT related. I think that would have been really great if there was a bit of stuff to do with um, information gathering in terms of like building a social engineering engagement, uh, building a website for social engineering. It was a really, really short lab um, and it just exposed you to the actual social engineering thing. And I think that that's kind of the point of this module. It, I, I think it wasn't about actually learning how to socially engineer someone. I think there are plenty of resources out there for that. I think this was more to do with just exposure. Once you've done the EJPT, if this is really interesting, then go for it. Learn a bit more about social engineering and move forward with that kind of thing. But apart from that, I really enjoyed it. It was a really nice short course, which was good. So if you've enjoyed this video or learned anything, please let me know in the comments below. If you wanna catch any more of this series, click right here and you'll be able to see the playlist for the EJPT series. I hope you have a brilliant week. See you in the next one.